Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the second part of our uh, review series for the subject correctional administration. Okay. Uh, previously, we talked about the uh, early historical account on the development of uh, correctional uh, practices. So we will uh, continue with uh, the discussion of the historical uh, accounts, but this time we'll be talking about the uh, developments in the field of uh, corrections in as far as uh, leniency towards criminal offenders are concerned. So the last uh, question that we have asked on the first part is that we were talking about okay, the age of enlightenment. Okay, As we have made mention, the age of enlightenment was the uh, period of time when uh, people, particularly in Europe, started talking about uh, the rights okay, of these uh, people. So even if they have committed uh, serious crimes for that matter, they will have, uh, they still have the so-called uh, right to life and therefore death penalty as well as torture okay, should uh, be uh, set aside to give way for the use of prison as a means of dealing with criminals. So we have there uh, several uh, individuals who are being uh, considered as uh, the uh, forerunners okay, of the so-called uh, reform in the field of correction. So, so the primary uh, personality okay, in this field is uh, no less than okay, Charles Montesquieu. Okay? So Charles Montesquieu, okay, who have written uh, a work entitled On the Spirit uh, of Laws, okay? And uh, under this particular on the spirit of law, okay, he tried to come up with a uh, comparison between different uh, forms of government, particularly the republican, the despotic, and that of the monarchical uh, forms of uh, government. That uh, according to Charles Montesquieu, these uh, types of government, particularly the despotic and the monarchical system of government, okay, are not uh, fit if we wanted to do some good okay or if we wanted to do some improvement in as far as the correctional field is uh, concerned okay now uh in his uh, book or in his work uh, on the spirit of loss he also argued about the proportionality in uh, punishment okay uh, proportionality in punishment in the sense that uh, uh, the government should not be imposing a generic system or a generic form of punishment just uh, just like before wherein uh, almost all forms of crimes could only be punished by means of death penalty and torture so according to charles montesquieu there must be a graduation of uh, penalty depending on the nature of the crime committed by that of the offender okay so According to Charles Montesquieu, okay, since uh, as we, uh, since he uh, already made the comparison of the so-called uh, different uh, systems of uh, government, he uh, advocated that in order to be uh, effective, okay, in the affairs of the people, he advocated that there must be separation of and balancing of uh, powers into judicial, executive, uh, as well as legislative. Uh, branches that according to Charles Montesquieu the separation and balancing of powers okay of the government will guarantee individuals okay freedom okay so aside from Charles Montesquieu another uh, notable reformer in the age of enlightenment is that we have their Cesar uh, Beccaria okay so Cesar Beccaria they believe that uh, punishment could only deter crime if okay it is certain if it is swift and it is severe okay now why is it necessary that uh, punishment okay should be certain okay it should be certain so that every anybody okay who would commit a crime would know that at any time he could get arrested and he could be punished for it swift in the sense that the earlier Okay, the punishment is imposed upon a criminal offender, the better the deterrent effect it would have to the offender themselves. 
So let's try to take, for example, the case of the Maguindanao massacre. In the Maguindanao massacre, it uh, during the first okay, few months, okay, after the crime was committed, people were clamoring okay, that uh, the Ampatuans should be okay, penalized. Okay, should be given the corresponding punishment. Okay, but then eventually, after several years, after ten years, okay, okay. The penalty was imposed, and that uh, it does. It, it seems that uh, people does not even care, okay, uh, about the imposition of uh, punishment for that matter. Okay, so kung tinitingnan tinitingnan natin, okay, really, okay, the swiftness of the penalty has some impact, okay, to the uh, to the people in as far as punishment because it is giving them a signal that they cannot afford to commit crime because a punishment is there waiting for them immediately after they have been arrested or after they have committed a crime. Another is that the penalty according to Cesar Vicaria must be severe in order that the severity of the punishment will outweigh whatever benefits the person would have derived from the commission of the crime. Okay? And then we have here the first question for the second part. Okay? He is considered as the greatest leader in the reform of the English criminal law. He believes that whatever punishment designed to negate whatever pleasure or gain the criminal derives from the crime, the crime rate would go down. Okay? So we have there John Howard. Cesar Vicaria, Manuel Montesimos, William Penn, or Jeremy Bentham. So if we are going to choose, of course, the question here is talking about an English criminal law. So we'll be looking for an Englishman. So among the choices, okay, uh, using the uh, method of analysis, basically there are only uh, three, actually. There are three person, there are three Englishmen here. So tanggalin na natin si Sar Sar Vicaria and we also remove Manuel Montesimus. So William Penn is an Englishman. However, he was uh, he was known, okay? Or he became famous not in England but in America. So we are left with two options, John Howard and then we also have there Jeremy Bentham. Okay? And of course, as far as these questions are concerned, okay, the best answer that we could choose actually here is no less than Jeremy Bentham. Okay, so in as far as Jeremy Bentham is concerned, he belongs to a family, long lines of family of uh, uh, lawyers. Okay, uh, his father was a lawyer, he became a lawyer, okay, but eventually the father was uh, disappointed uh, in him when he started voicing out his, his concern against the uh, English uh, government. Okay, but then eventually the works of uh, Jeremy Bentham. Okay, was uh, very important because it laid the foundation of the English uh, criminal law. Okay, as far as Jeremy Bentham is concerned, okay, his uh, main proposition in as far as uh, dealing with criminals is uh, anchored on the idea of what we call as utilitarian hedonism. Just like what we have made mentioned uh, a while back in the case of uh, the Nicomachean ethics, written by no less than uh, one of the uh, Greek uh, philosopher, okay? So they believed okay, that there is a uh, strong relationship between pleasure and pain, okay? That uh, a criminal basically engages in an act simply because there is pleasure in it. And in order for us to prevent any people from thinking of any criminal act, we should be able to outweigh the uh, estimated or the calculated pleasure that could be derived from the commission of the crime. Okay, so that is with regards to Jeremy Bentham. Okay, another thing notable about Jeremy Bentham, we'll be discussing it later. Okay, we have there the so called the Panopticon prison. We'll be discussing it later. And then we also have there William Penn. So, William Penn, as we have made mention, is an Englishman. Okay, and uh, during that time, okay, William Penn okay, went to the United States. Okay, and uh, the moment that he transferred to the United States, the prevailing principle already in Europe was already with what we call as the age of enlightenment. So he came to the United States, okay, to a place which was uh, eventually uh, named after him, the state of uh, Pennsylvania. Okay, so William Penn introduced okay, a, uh, the idea of coming up with uh, using prison 
as a means of dealing with criminal instead of uh, plainly using death penalty and torture. So that eventually William Penn okay, uh, created a uh, group of religious people okay, to work for uh, the establishment okay, as well as to urge the American government at that time okay, to adapt the system of uh, using prison as a means of dealing with criminal. So Jeremy Bentham eventually created this group of religious workers referred eventually as the Quakers. And then, of course, we also have the Manuel uh, Montesimos. So Manuel Montesimos is uh, a Spanish. Okay, He was the uh, uh, warden or he was the prison superintendent of, the, uh, of a prison in uh, Valencia, Spain. So what uh, were the contributions of what Manuel Montesimos that makes him noteworthy to remember in the field of correction? So basically, Manuel Montesimos is one of the pioneers okay, of using the system okay, of uh, classification in prison. So what Manuel Montesimos did is that he did tried to divide the prison into several companies. In each company is actually a representation of a specific group of people. One company for males, one company for females, one company for children. The company for the uh, males were further divided into those who committed misdemeanors and for those who have committed more serious crimes. And he also imposed one of the uh, most effective uh, form of prison discipline, okay, which of course we came to know as the fault of one is the fault of all. Meaning that uh, every member of that particular company is wary of their behavior and they are also responsible in policing the behavior of the other inmates considering the fact that they know that they could be held punishable or that they could be punished. They could be given a uh, disciplinary action if one of their uh, uh, co-inmates would have committed a certain violation. Okay, so that is Manuel Montesimos. Okay, for Cesar Vicaria, we already discussed that a while ago. And then, of course, we have there uh, John Howard. So John Howard uh, is one of the uh, uh, influential uh, Englishmen in as far as reforming the uh, English okay, prison system is uh, concerned. Okay? So John Howard, with his uh, experience, okay, conducted a, uh, a visit to the different uh, gales in uh, England. And he found out the uh, living condition, the hellish living condition of the English uh, prisoners. So as a result, okay, he influenced actually the uh, passage of a particular law, which was eventually referred to as the Penitentiary Act of uh, 1779, that uh, created a new class of uh, institution okay, that incorporated his uh, observation, his uh, recommendations based from his observation of the English prison. First, okay, he identified that uh, there must be okay, issues concerning the use of what we call as uh, uh, humane treatment. Okay? So prisoners should be afforded with the so-called humane treatment. Okay? Now, uh, way back then, okay, prior to the Penitentiary Act of 1779, prisoners are actually uh, asked to perform Okay, what we call as uh, uh, you know, labor. Okay? But uh, the labor from which they are required to perform is not that productive, which is uh, referred basically as uh, shot drill. Now, uh, what is this so-called shot drill? Shot drill is just a, a form of disciplinary action given to a particular prisoner just to exhaust them. Okay? Para pagurin lang yung prisoner, nothing more, nothing less, even if the work is not that productive. Another is that sanitary living conditions. Because in the observation of John Howard, okay, majority of the English prisons during that time okay, is uh, a common area. Common area in the sense that everybody okay, uh, conglomerate in that particular area. That is where they eat, that is where the uh, deficit, that is where the urinate. Everything, every activity is being undertaken there. So basically, it is very unsanitary. So he recommended... Okay? And uh, eventually it was embedded as part of the Penitentiary Act of 1779, the creation of, a, of sanitation, 
sanitary facilities within the prison. Another is that uh, he also recommended okay, that there must be single cells for sleeping. Okay, also, he recommended that there must be segregation of men from women in segregation of adults from okay, minors. And the most important is the abolition of corruption in the English prisons, okay, which was uh, or which is referred to before as the fee system. Now, the fee system involves, uh, you know, you have to pay for everything. You want to have light during night time, you have to pay for it. Okay, you want to have, uh, you want to eat, you have, you want to have blanket. Okay, you have to pay for it. Everything is for a fee. And because of this observation made by John Howard, okay, again, okay, by reason of the Penitentiary Act of 1779, it resulted to, you know, okay, making the prison as a government business. Okay, not, not business in the, in the sense of making money, but it is now the concern okay, of the government to man okay, and okay, administer prison and no longer by private individuals, which caused okay, corruption in this English prison. Okay? So as a result of the work of uh, John Howard, of course, okay, he was eventually referred to as the father of corrections. Okay? So we have here a question. They are members of a family of religious uh, movements collectively known as the Religious Society of Friends. Okay? So as, uh, as I have uh, made mention a while back, this is the group that was organized by no less than uh, uh, William Penn with the end in view of trying to end okay, the brutality okay, that is being given to criminal offenders and instead they have to be placed in prison where they could uh, serve their sentence and to allow them eventually to re-enter into the mainstream of community. So the answer for this particular question are the Quakers. Okay, another question here. So an English reformer sometimes referred to as the angel of prisons because of her driving force behind new legislation to treat prisoners humanely. Okay, so choices are Elizabeth Fry, William Penn, John Bellers, Morgan Freeman. Of course, you have to remove Morgan Freeman because Morgan Freeman is uh, an actor. Okay, he has nothing to do with this. Yeah. So, the uh, if we are going to take closely at the question, the question is here. Okay, so we have the the her. Okay, so her referring to a woman, and uh, I believe there is only one woman here. Okay, Elizabeth Fry, unless you look at the name John as the name for a woman. Okay, so basically the answer for this question is Elizabeth Fry. Okay, so Elizabeth Fry is one of those uh, prison reformer who actually tried to look into the welfare okay, of women in prison. Okay, so how about uh, John Bellers? Who is uh, John Bellers? Okay, so John Bellers is the uh, first person to make a plea Okay, for the abolition of the death penalty. Okay, John Bellers argued okay, that criminals uh, were the creation of the society itself and uh, urged that when in prison, they should uh, be given a particular work so that they might return in the society okay, with an urge for, an, for industry. Okay, so again, John Bellers, okay, he's the first person to plea for the abolition of the death penalty. Okay. Another question, okay, in relation to transportation of uh, criminals. So it is a prison complex located at the coast of Cape Town, South Africa, which serves as a refuge camp for people afflicted with leprosy before it was eventually converted into a prison. Okay. So just like uh, one of the uh, prison facilities here in the Philippines, which was uh, eventual, uh, which was uh, initially uh, used as a facility for those people suffering from leprosy to isolate them from, uh, you know, from contaminating other people. Okay, so the answer for this particular question is the Robben Island. So the Robben Island, gentlemen and ladies, 
is uh, basically uh, complex, prison complex. There are many facilities that are located in that area, considering the fact that the idea there before is to, you know, to transfer okay, people suffering from leprosy. Okay, and then uh, how about Port Arthur? What is Port Arthur? So Port Arthur is uh, located on the opposite end of uh, the Norfolk prison colony okay, for that made uh, Alexander Maconucci famous. So on the other end of Australia is the uh, uh, tawag natin dito is the uh, uh, prison of Alexander Maconucci and on the other side is the way up there the Port Arthur. Okay, so there are two types of uh, offenders being transferred in Australia before. Those who did not commit uh, a crime, those who committed uh, not so serious crime and those who are considered as hardened uh, criminals. So if you did not commit a not so serious crime, then definitely your destination is the Norfolk prison. But if you are considered as a hardened criminal, then definitely your destination will be the Port Arthur. Okay, and of course, uh, we have the, the Pennsylvania prison and the Elmira prison. Both of these are located in the United States. Okay, so Pennsylvania prison, that is basically a representation of the uh, solitary uh, system. Okay, we, uh, we know for sure that that, that is one of the, uh, atawag natin dito, the, uh, one of the representation of the solitary system. And then, of course, we also have their Ilmira Reformatory. Okay, if uh, Pennsylvania is more on institutionalization, in Ilmira Reformatory or Ilmira Prison is uh, better known for its uh, non-institutional okay, approach okay, to the correction of criminals. Considering the fact that Ilmira Reformatory pioneered a system okay, which is eventually referred to as the parole system, gentlemen and ladies. Okay. So it is a French penal colony from uh, the year 1852 to 1959 where political prisoners were exiled. Okay? So if uh, Australia basically is uh, uh, an English colony, okay, there are other parts okay, near uh, Australia actually okay, that were uh, part of a French uh, colony. And this uh, was used as, a, an, as an exile uh, area for those people suffering or uh, from those people okay, who are politically exiled, okay? So that is basically the Devil's Island, okay? The Devil's Island. Why was it called the Devil's Island? Because that is the island where they have seen okay, this kind of uh, animal that was often referred to as a devil in uh, French uh, horror uh, stories. Now, the difference between the French and, of course, the, uh, the rest of the world is that in the rest of the world, okay, uh, the bedtime stories for children are Snow White, okay, Rapunzel, and the like. Okay, but uh, for the French, the bedtime stories are horror. Okay, and one of the most common is uh, a devil, which was vividly described in one of their stories. So when they saw it in this island, they referred to it as the Devil's Island. Okay? And that island is known as the Tas uh, as Tasmania. Okay. Okay. Another question. It contains cell in the pit similar to the underground cistern of Long Ago Rome that were used to detain offenders undergoing trial in some cases and to hold sentence offenders where they will be starved to death. Now, this type of uh, or this uh, type of question usually breeds uh, some sort of confusion on the part of the uh, readers. Sometimes upon reading the question, they will automatically choose. Okay, I hope you did not choose it, okay, but they usually choose Mamer Time Prison. And when you choose the Mamer Time Prison, you are completely wrong. Okay? Because if you are going to look, go, go back to the question, the question is this, contained cell in the pit similar. Okay, so what is that we are referring to? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so mammal time prison, so contained cell in the pit similar to the mammal time prison. So parang yan yung naging tanong. Now, if you are going to choose mammal time prison, okay, you cannot compare yourself with yourself also. 
Okay, you cannot uh, stay in front of the mirror and then you would say that you are more handsome than the one you are looking at the mirror. Ganon. So, hindi pwedeng ganon. Okay? So, in as far as this is concerned, okay, we, we might uh, want to start, okay, from uh, the one below. Okay? So, we have the, the St. Michael's Prison. Can we consider St. Michael's Prison to uh, answer this particular question? The answer is no. Okay? Now, uh, the St. Michael's Prison, the setting for this is uh, in Rome. Okay? So, the Roman Catholic Okay, introduced the so-called St. Michael's Prison okay, during the time of Pope Clement XI. Okay? And at the same time, this uh, St. Michael's Prison was specifically designed for juvenile delinquents or for youthful offenders. The idea of the St. Michael's Prison is that they considered children, these juveniles, as sick individuals. Okay? So they have created a facility very similar to the hospital, to a hospital, and uh, these juveniles are being confined here okay, to determine what were the reasons that led them to commit okay, an offending behavior. So that okay, the St. Michael's Prison is also known as the Hospicio de San Michel. It is also known as the Hospice of St. Michael. Okay? It was also known as the uh, okay, uh, St. Michael's uh, prison for that matter okay and then we also have there the sing sing prison so the sing sing prison gentlemen and ladies okay uh is not similar to that of the uh uh mammer time prison considering the fact that sing sing prison is uh, one of the most secured facilities in the united states because this is the place where uh, uh mostly okay most uh, death penalty were conducted okay so in sing sing prison okay the, uh, it is one of the prison with the most uh, you know with the most uh, unique system of uh, imposing death penalty and one of the famous uh, death penalty method that was used in sing sing prison was the sing sing bath okay so the sing sing bath is a process wherein a uh, shower bath or a gadget which is known as the shower bath is placed on top of the head okay of the uh, half naked uh, offender half naked or totally naked offender and a volume of water okay is being pushed directly onto the head of the k okay, person and the water is so called considering the fact that it is coming from okay a melting ice Okay, so now to to now na yellow, napakalamig. Okay, it, the the volume is so high that it is being pushed directly onto your head. Okay, as a result, okay, of course, okay, your body will uh, become numb. Of course, the idea there is to kill you by means of hypothermia. Yeah, so papatayin ka by reason of uh, hypothermia. Now, people of America started complaining. Sabi nila, masyado namang uh, inhuman, masyado namang inhumane. Yung uh, sing sing bath na yan. So that uh, America came to exercise okay, some sort of uh, uh, discretion in trying to coming up with a, another system of punishment. So they, they, they made a competition for uh, prison staff to think of a uh, different way of executing death penalty that could not be found around the world. Okay? And the winner actually was a dentist. Okay, I, uh, the, there is no reference as to the name of that uh, dentist. So then this dentist, while treating his uh, patient, okay, eventually okay, a, uh, a, uh, an electric current fell into the, elect into the uh, dental chair and it resulted to the patient being electrocuted. As a result, he came up with the idea of uh, coming up with the so-called electric chair. So that the Sing Sing prison is also being famous okay, for uh, creating America's first electric chair. Okay? And at the same time, one thing that we need to remember about the Sing Sing prison is that the Sing Sing prison is also being considered as America's okay, first maximum security facility. It is America's first maximum security facility. So that the only thing that is left is letter A, 
So the answer for this particular question is letter A. Okay? So the Mamer Time Prison and that of the main state prison are almost similar. They are an underground prison with the sole intention of imposing death penalty by starvation. Okay. On the first uh, lecture series, we made mention about workhouses that is being built uh, all over uh, Europe, intended to, you know, to make profit out of the prisoners. So that, okay, in as far as this is concerned, okay, in uh, Belgium, this person created okay, a particular uh, workhouse, okay, which was referred to as the Mason Divorce. Now, who among the following established this Mason divorce? Okay, so that is no less than Jean Jacques Philippe Villain. Okay, so we, we talked about John Howard, okay, Rene Descartes, and Baroque Espinosa as uh, pioneers of the Age of Enlightenment. John Howard, okay, uh, Cesar Vicaria, Jeremy Bentham, they all take an active uh, role. Okay, in as far as trying to modify the severity of punishment to criminal offenders. In the case of Rene Descartes and Baroque Espinosa, it's through their writings that actually influenced their governments okay, to adapt certain measures of leniency to be accorded to their criminal offenders. And then we go to America. <coughs> so this was originally constructed as a detention jail in uh, Philadelphia. It was converted later into a state prison and became the first American penitentiary. Okay, so very basic yung tanong. Okay, so the answer for this question is the Walnut Street Jail. But if you will uh, be asked, what is now the Walnut Street Jail? Since Walnut Street Jail is already uh, it was changed because it was converted into a state prison, okay. So the Walnut Street Jail is now known as the Philadelphia State Prison, and the Philadelphia State State Prison, okay, just like the uh, Pennsylvania, uh, uh, Pennsylvania, or uh, yes, okay, they adopted the solitary system of imprisonment, okay. So Philadelphia Prison, Pennsylvania Prison. They were all famous because of the so-called solitary system of confinement. Okay, next question. It is an updated and highly structured version of exile and banishment. It was a second method of removing offenders from society, including those sentenced to death. Again, this is another question that breeds confusion among Okay, takers of the criminology licensure examination. The first thing that would come to their mind after reading the word updated and highly structured is that they would, they would automatically choose okay, to uh, answer this chero, which would actually make their option wrong. Okay? Considering the fact that uh, while it is true okay, that this chero is updated, that this chero is highly structured, however, when we're referring to this chero, it is not, okay, or it does not remove offender from society, okay? It is not even a method of removing offenders from society, considering the fact that you will allow, actually, the person to roam around the community, the society, even after he committed a crime, okay? So if you are going to consider exile, transportation, and this chero, Okay, are almost similar in trying to limit okay, the offender from coming into a specified territory or a specific territory for that matter. But they have been, or this is uh, some sort of a, uh, an evolution. Okay? So the first uh, there was exile. Even in the uh, Bible, okay, in the Old Testament, when Adam and Eve were banished, Okay, or were exiled from the Garden of Eden. So that was the first one. Okay, so it became okay, updated. Okay, so it was improved. Naging transportation. Transportation, it was also structured. It's structured in the sense that there was a law okay, that allowed the use of transportation. That is the meaning of structured. 
Okay, because there is a law, there is a manner from which you are going to impose the same. Okay, so that, okay, in as far as uh, this question is concerned, okay, our answer here is not this chero, but rather transportation, the second evolution or the first evolution rather of exile or banishment. Okay, so ano yung uh, dapat nating tandaan dito sa transportation? It was updated from exile. It became highly structured because the English government need to come up with a law in order for them to be able to implement transportation. And transportation, as we have made mention, okay, is actually a method of removing offenders from society. But the question is, what was the first method of removing offenders in the society during those times? Okay, it was by means of death penalty. Okay, so death penalty was the first method of removing offenders from society. Second is by means of transportation. Next question, wala nang uh, option to kasi napakadali. So it literally means pain or suffering and is considered as the origin of the word penology. Okay, so with this, we have to be very uh, careful again. We need to know which language is being used as basis. So if it is, uh, if we are talking about its uh, Latin origin, then basically it is Puena. If we're talking about its Greek origin, then basically it is Poine. Okay. If we're talking about uh, uh, of its uh, English origin, then it is Peno. Okay. So pag Latin, Puena. Okay. Pag uh, Greek, well, basically that would be, yeah, that would be Poine. Okay. And then we also have there, okay, the ancient forms of uh, punishment. Ancient in the sense that it has been practiced in the earliest uh, days. Okay, it has been practiced by our uh, earliest uh, uh, ancestors, by the earliest civilizations for that matter. Okay, so death penalty in any form is considered, okay, as uh, an ancient system. So I would like to reiterate myself, okay, death penalty in any form is considered as an ancient system. Okay, it is somehow affected by burning, beheading, hanging, breaking at the wheels, pillory, and other forms of medical execution. Okay, so to answer the question, is lethal injection an ancient form of punishment? The answer basically to that question is yes. Okay. The method might be modern, but since it results to the death of the offender, we still consider that penalty by lethal injection as an ancient form of punishment. Take note, what we are talking here is the effect of the punishment. If it results to death, whether you have created okay, a method that is more, so humane that the offender will not feel anything before he dies, Okay, but uh, he dies anyway. Okay, that is still considered as a form, as an ancient form of punishment. And then, of course, we also have the uh, physical torture. So, physical torture, okay, the imposition of uh, pain without the necessity of producing death. Okay, so you can cut his limbs, you can cut his tongues, you can cut his genitals. Okay, you can uh, you can hit his body hard. Okay, to the point that he could no longer move, provided that he will not die, that is considered as a form of physical torture. Take note, it is limited to physical torture. Okay, uh, psychological torture is not included. Okay, because let's say, for example, okay, you have committed a crime and then you were arrested and then you were sentenced to stay in prison, okay, to be subject to psychological torture. In what way? Because uh, on a daily basis, they will be calling you pangit, 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 pangit. Diba? Ara-ara kong tinatawag na pangit, that is a form of psychological uh, torture, but that is not counted as an ancient system of punishment. And then, of course, we also have their social degradation. So social degradation, it is uh, simply an act of putting the offender into shame or humiliation. Okay, shame or humiliation. Okay. 
So how is that uh, being done? There are many ways of uh, doing this so-called uh, social degradation. The most uh, common is, of course, uh, yung uh, pinaka-obvious, okay? They will uh, allow you to stay at the middle of the community so that everybody who will pass by that area will know that you are a criminal. That is a form of social degradation. Another social, another form of social degradation, let's say, for example, you are a rich okay, man, okay? However, after committing a crime, since you are working in the government, they immediately took all of your property so that you will start from the lowest ranks of the society. That is another form of social degradation. And then, of course, we have the banishment or exile. Banishment or exile simply okay, uh, removing you from the place where you committed the crime okay, and uh, expecting you not to go back to the place where you committed it. And transportation, take note, huh? the difference between banishment or exile okay, as well as transportation is this. In uh, banishment, you'll be taken out from the place where you committed the crime but you will still be allowed to stay in the same country. In transportation, you will be taken out from the place where you committed a crime and you will be transferred outside the country. So that is the difference between this banishment and transportation as an ancient system of punishment. And then, of course, lastly, we have the uh, slavery. Now, slavery is uh, basically a form of punishment wherein the person will have to render okay, a uh, personal service for a period of time or for a lifetime depending on the gravity of the offense. Let's say, for example, you have uh, uh, committed a crime uh, from which the corresponding value is a few thousands, okay, and then uh, your victim opted to make you his slave for a period of 10 years, something like that, in order for you to pay off your debts, something like that, okay? Or it could be for a lifetime, okay? The problem with slavery is that you are not considered as a human being, okay? Considering the fact that you are considered as a property if you are a slave. You do not have a right, okay? Just like an, uh, just like an animal, they will have to brand you so that uh, you could be associated with your owner, something like that, okay? So some of the examples of torture and death as in forms of uh, punishment are provided in the uh, next uh, slides, okay? So first we have there the uh, heretics fork. So hery heretics fork, okay, or pork, fork rather, okay, is attached on a belt, okay, that is, uh, secured on your neck and uh, this uh, fork are two pronged ibig sabihin sa taas at sa baba okay and then uh, of course it is very sharp okay it is anchored on your chin and on your sternum okay the slight movement would actually result to piercing your uh, chin as well as your sternum which could result to profuse okay uh, bleeding okay and then of course we also have their uh, the rat torture. So the rat torture is that they will place a uh, big rat on your stomach covered with uh, a glass. And then on top of the glass, they will put uh, a charcoal, okay, a burning charcoal. Of course, the rat sense that uh, he is being uh, threatened by the heat of the charcoal. He will look okay, for the, soft, uh, the softest spot and start digging. And in that case, that is in your stomach, okay? And then we also have there the brazen bull, which is a uh, design of the uh, Greeks. Okay, so the brazen bull is actually made of, uh, natin dito, made of uh, bronze or brass for that matter. Okay, this uh, uh, figured in a form of a bull. Okay, they will put heat underneath and the uh, victim okay, will be placed inside. Okay. So why it is called a brazen bull? Because uh, of course, because of the heat, okay, uh, felt by the person, he will start shouting, okay. As a result, the bull will appear to be shouting, and because uh, the body of the man is uh, mostly composed of water, it will start to evaporate, okay. So there you go, okay. Just try to imagine the agony of death that uh, 
a person will experience being placed inside the oven in being cooked to death. Diba? And then of course, uh, my friend from Russia, okay, we have their uh, Vlad the Impaler. Okay, so Vlad the Impaler is uh, rather a psychopath okay, than, uh, than actually uh, tawag natin dito, than actually uh, a leader. Okay, so any uh, criminal, okay, they will throw it in an area full of uh, pointed uh, wooden spikes, okay, and uh, any part of their body would actually be pierced, okay. To show how uh, psychopath uh, Vlad the Impaler is, okay, when there are no more criminals, he started uh, importing criminals from other countries, okay, just for the uh, uh, joy perhaps of uh, seeing people being impaled to death. And then, of course, we also have the, the neck torture. Okay? By mere looking at it, I believe you are already aware of uh, how it works. So it is being placed on your neck. Okay? And then they will have to tighten it okay, little by little until such time that these spikes will start okay, piercing through the neck of the victim. Okay? And then, of course, the Judas Cradle. Okay, so the Judas Cradle, just try to imagine that. If you have watched uh, the movie, uh, uh, ano nang, uh, movie on, okay, I forgot the title, but uh, it has the same uh, punishment. Okay, so the person will be tied, he will be raised, and underneath him, they will put a uh, pyramid, a wooden pyramid. Okay. And the tip of the pyramid will be placed directly into the anus. And then they will start uh, lowering the person until such time that the anus would, uh, would break. So uh, when the anus uh, breaks, then uh, the person will be released. In most cases, people do not die because of this, uh, of this uh, practice, but rather they die because of the infection brought about by this uh, uh, penalty. Just try to imagine how many people were placed in this uh, Judas cradle, okay, before another person was placed. So in turn, it would eventually result to the infection of the anus. And then of course, we also have there the uh, coffin uh, torture. So the coffin torture, okay, uh, we have seen this from the movie uh, Pirates of the uh, Caribbean. So they will uh, hang this uh, coffin uh, torture. They will place the offender on top. Okay, just like that of the uh, Mammoth Time Prison, the idea here is that for you to starve to death. The only difference is that the Mammoth Time is underground, okay, the coffin torture is uh, above the ground. Okay, and then we also have there a French, uh, a French uh, invention, the guillotine. So the French believe that uh, they have uh, created a system of uh, punishment known as the uh, guillotine, which to them is the most humane form of punishment because uh, it uh, removes okay, uh, the uh, agonizing pain, the agonizing death okay, of a person placed on death penalty. Okay, so just try to imagine, puputulin ka agad yung ulo mo. Okay. Now, according to me, uh, medicine, when your uh, head is uh, removed okay, or when the head is separated from the body, you're still uh, alive for somewhere around uh, four to eight uh, seconds. So definitely when they will cut your head by means of gluten, you will still be able to see your body okay, while your head is rolling away from it. Yeah? So just try to imagine, no? nilalagyan pa ng basket sa ilalim. Okay, pag pinuputol na yung katawan. Okay? And then of course, uh, we have the uh, rack. Okay? The rack, hindi ba to na the rack, but R-A-C-K. Okay, so the rack, gentlemen and ladies, uh, also, we have seen this in the movie uh, Braveheart. Okay? So ropes will be tied, okay? Again, uh, in your hands and in your foot, and then they will try to stretch uh, the rope. Okay? So when the rope uh, stretches, okay, your body goes with it until such time okay, that your uh, body will start to, you know, to be stretched okay, uh, until such time that your bones are uh, dislocated, until such time that your limbs are separated from your body. 
And then of course, we also have there the uh, tang tearer. So the tang tearer uh, resembles a large uh, scissor. It is actually being used to cut off the tongues. Okay, so ginagamit yan sa mga chismosa actually. Okay, tang tearer. And then of course, uh, there are recent uh, developments, but it is not being used by governments, but rather it is used by uh, organized crimes. We have there the cement shoes. So they will uh, put a uh, quick drying uh, cement on your foot and then they will throw you into the ocean, okay? And of course, uh, with the idea that you will drown, okay? And then of course, uh, as we have made mention a while ago, we have there the uh, braking at the wheels. So you can just try to imagine what will happen to you if you are placed on the braking at the wheel. So you will be placed on the wheel and then again, the executioner will hit you on your limbs okay, with the intention of breaking your bones, okay? So that you cannot move and then they will just leave you there, okay? Until such time that you die. And then we also have there the uh, crocodile shears, okay? So a crocodile shear is just like a pliers, only that uh, instead of a uh, pliers, okay? The head is uh, made of uh, a, uh, a part resembling that of a crocodile with sharp teeth. And they will put that into a red hot uh, state and then they will use it to tear off okay, your skin okay, or tear off body parts of those who tried to harm okay, the king. Okay? So that is the crocodile shear. Okay? I hope that... Uh, this serves as a deterrence to everyone not to commit a crime if you do not want to, of course, uh, be given these types of uh, punishment. Okay, so that ends our uh, second part. Please watch out for the second part of our lecture video.